Buckler, known as the Foodie Tourist, and today we are on location at Edgewater Resort at Taylorsville Lake. And for those of you who read my blog, you know that um, for the whole year of 2012, my goal was to uh, find interests and do some things that I'd never done for the first time. So uh, one of the first things I got to do was go kayaking at Taylorsville Lake, and I got to spend some time at Edgewater Resort and met some folks there, and they asked me to come back and teach their guests um, something for a weekend getaway, something easy to prepare in their nice kitchens they have here. Um, I can tell you in my kitchen, it's two foot by six foot, so this is pretty nice to cook in. This is a really nice cottage that they rent out for a weekend getaway, so uh, we thought we'd come in here and um, give you a view of what the cottage looks like and teach their uh, guests a couple easy recipes that they can do for Valentine's Day. So let's get started. Um, we're going to do two main recipes today. One is going to be a baked egg dish that you bake in ramekins that um, is really pretty to look at when it's done, but it's delicious. And I'll give you some hints on that too. This is going to be um, some red velvet heart-shaped pancakes for Valentine's Day. And I'll give you some hints about that on how you can eat both of these recipes every day during the week. Not just for special holidays, but I'll teach you how to glam them up and you can have them for holidays too. So um, we're going to start with the baked egg dish. And the first thing you want to do is um, get you some ramekins, and these can be the white ones. Um, the color really doesn't matter. What I find is um, the normal size ramekin, six fit in a nine by 13 pan. So I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. But for this case, because it's a romantic getaway, we're going to do two. Um, and we're going to have him make them so he can deliver them to her in bed on Valentine's Day. So the first thing you want to do is uh, line your ramekins with butter. Um, this is going to help the eggs slide out at the end. The cool thing about the ramekin is it's going to hold them um, in a shape that's going to be the perfect um, size for an English muffin. Um, that's perfect. Perfect. And then after we get done, um, one tip I'll give you now that he's better on that is if you lay some butter out the day before, it'll soften for you to use the next day. You'll, you'll see that we're going to use this softened butter on a different on a couple of different um, applications here, but set it out overnight so it's soft for you the next day and it'll be easy. Another tip for you is um, this brush, you can use this pastry brush as um, to brush pastries as, as you would the uh, regular paint brush looking kind, or you can um, put it on a hot surface because it's silicone, so that's something to invest in and it's not real expensive. So after you get these buttered, um, you want to crack an egg in each dish. Like I said earlier, a, a 10 by or a 9 by 13 pan will hold six of these ramekins. And when you buy these, if you buy them in a pack, you can get them at Walmart or any place um, pretty inexpensively. And you can get them with lids. So I'll advise you to uh, get them with lids if you can find them. Um, okay, the next thing we're going to do is put um, two tablespoons of heavy cream. So this is a half a tablespoon. So you put two of the, uh, four in each ramekin. So two tablespoons of heavy cream in each ramekin. And what's really cool about using heavy cream, not half and half, um, is we're going to sprinkle the top with cheese, and the cheese is going to mix with the cream, and it's going to create a, a cheesy cream sauce that'll fall down over the eggs once we take them out of the ramekin. So it keeps your um, English muffins from being dry. Which brings me to a next step, let me just say. We've uh, preheated the grill for a couple different applications, but um, for this dish, what we're going to do is, um, at the end, we're going to um, take the English muffins and brush them with butter and put them on the griddle side. And you can do this in a pan just as easy in a skillet. You don't have to have a griddle, but this is going to work out good. Um, one thing when it comes to English muffins is you want to look for the ones that have nooks and crannies so the cheese sauce can get down in them. That's a good thing. And make sure that you slice them um, because they're going to come whole. So you want to make sure to uh, cut them in half. So after you get the cream done, um, you want to uh, sprinkle them with cheese. And we've got uh, shredded Parmesan and we've got cheddar. And um, there is no salt. This can be pretty bland. Uh, we don't add salt. And you may not know um, you really don't want to salt eggs when you cook them because it makes them too hard and gets tough. You really don't want to do that, but the Parmesan is a good way to do that and add flavor without um, having tough eggs. Now the next um, 
ingredient might be a little bit different on a normal weekday, let's say. Um, for our purposes, <laughs> for our purposes, uh, we're going to use herbs de Provence. Now, you may not know what that is. It's a combination of a bunch of ingredients. Just put it on one for, um, for this breakfast. And herbs de Provence has rosemary, has basil, has garlic, has salt and pepper. But what I like about this particular version is when you go to make it, look for some that has lavender. Because when you bake these, the lavender gets real bright purple and it's pretty. Um, I make these for a bed and breakfast and they always do an all when they see purple, bright purple specks in it. So that's just... Now, if it's a man that's going to eat them and you're going to eat them every day, then what I would do, and I've made them this way, is these are real bacon bits. You can top these rather than use that herb. You can just put these on the other one that you're going to have. <laughs> we'll fancy her up. <laughs> I appreciate that. And I've made these, I make these every Sunday, honestly. And I make six of these in a 9 by 13 like I said. And I'll do different toppings and different herbs on them. It'll depend on what my mood is. But I have to say the herbs to Provence with lavender is my favorite. Um, my nephew lived with me when he was 12, and he hated that. So that's where the bacon came from, or sausage crumbles, quite honestly. But if you see how easy it is, that's the extent of that. So now what we're going to do is run some hot water, and you want to fill this about halfway up with water. Now what that does is keep your eggs from getting brown around the edges. This is, now you obviously have to be careful when you carry this to the stove because the water boils eventually. These will take about 30 to 40 minutes. So we'll come over and put them in the oven. And while these are baking, we'll do um, the next accompaniment to this gourmet Valentine breakfast, and that's going to be um, candy bacon. Um, when, the, when the eggs come out, just to finish up this part, when the eggs come out, what we're going to do is grill some Canadian bacon. You can, um, that's my original recipe. And we're gonna grill the English muffins and then we'll assemble it on the plate that he's gonna carry to, for, to her for breakfast. So while the eggs are cooking, we'll work on the bacon. This is thick cut bacon. They call it a butcher's cut of bacon. You really don't wanna use thin bacon because um, it cooks up too thin and it's too, it'll burn really easy. So in this bowl here, all we have is brown sugar and cinnamon. That's it. You just mix it up in the bowl, and this is fresh cracked brown, uh, black pepper, brown pepper. That would be an interesting ingredient that I don't have in my cabinet. We're going to uh, put this on a tray that's under the cutting board. <laughs> OK. You're just going to lay this flat on here. And then we're going to pepper. And you only have to really pepper one side. Um, we've got some long ways, yeah. Um, we've got some bacon now because it takes 30 to 40 minutes, too. Um, so you'll get to see it. But what you'll want to do is uh, use fresh black pepper on all of it on one side. And then just use your fingers to sprinkle it up and down. And I like cinnamon. A lot of people who make candied bacon, they just use brown sugar. But I think it's boring. So I do cinnamon, nutmeg, I've used pumpkin pie spice or apple pie spice, just whatever. It's real, this bacon is really good too. You can uh, cut it up on a uh, cutting board and sprinkle it in salads. You know, you can do all kinds of things, but it's, it's a really good bacon. Or you can just eat it, if any lasts for salad, you can do that, but it never lasts. So you just want to mix the cinnamon and brown sugar up, and then you just use your fingers and sprinkle, and then you can put black pepper on. Can I put too much of this on? Not really. Not really. One important thing when you bake this, though, is um, you want to put um, a cooling rack on a cookie sheet so the um, bacon grease can drip off. Because if not, your bacon, number one, isn't going to get crisp. But number two, it's just going to sit in bacon fat and everything is going to wash off that you spent all the time putting on it. So you really can't go crazy. You might have to bake it a little bit longer um, because it will get crispy when it when it cools, it'll be crispier. So if you put a lot of um, brown sugar topping on it, you might have to make it a little bit longer. Perfect, perfect. And then just, you wanna wash your hands? 
hands. You wash your hands, I'll pepper. You don't want to touch other stuff with raw food on your hands. Fresh ground pepper is good too. You want to use this instead of canned pepper because it's a lot stronger. And you really won't taste this pepper until the very end. Okay, so we'll put this in the oven and this will bake about as long as the eggs do. About 30, 45 minutes. And like I said, we have both going. So uh, we'll show you what that looks like at the end. Okay, you might want to turn that up just a hair. And we'll move on to the cakes. Now this, I've um, done a little bit ahead of time just to save time. This um, is dry ingredients here. This is um, all-purpose flour, bacon soda, bacon powder, uh, unsweetened cocoa powder, and three tablespoons of sugar. And I'll have the uh, ingredients list and directions on the foodietourist.com. So you'll be able to go there and print them out and see this video and watch us do it again. So you just want to mix these together. This is a basic, just so you know, it's a basic pancake recipe, you know. Honestly, if you want to buy a box of red velvet cake mix and use it, you can do that. You can use biscuit. Just follow the directions like you would pancake batter and add um, a couple tablespoons of cocoa to it. Because you'll see the, with the wet ingredients what is going to make it a red velvet cake. And you might not know that red velvet cake is actually chocolate cake and it's red food coloring. So, um, like I said, you can use biscuit or a bacon mix if you want to, if you want to save all this step. So then, in this one, this is a little bit different than if you used a, a baking mix for that, but this is three quarter cup of um, buttermilk. There are two secret ingredients in mine, and one is buttermilk, the other is creme fraiche or sour cream. We're going to use sour cream in this case, but this is three quarters of a cup of buttermilk with a tablespoon of real vanilla. And I could do a whole other episode on vanilla, let me just tell you. But that's what this is, buttermilk and vanilla. So we're going to pour that in here. Now when you make this, if it looks too thick at the end, all you have to do is um, add some more buttermilk to it. Don't add water, just add some more buttermilk. So to this, we're going to add a quarter cup of sour cream. So with this step, you're separating your wet and dry ingredients. That's all you're doing. And an egg. That's what you like this Thanks. <laughs> That's okay. Do you know what? It's funny because a lot of people use these little dishes and they crack their egg in it first to look and make sure there's nothing wrong with it. You don't get a shell and all that. I've never done that. I'm sure it's a good idea, but I've just never wanted to do that step. That's just dirty in another dish, and I've always had to do it myself. So we're skipping that part. So you also want to add. You want to whisk all of your wet ingredients, and you don't have to, you know, there's nothing perfect about it, it doesn't, it can have lumps. The main thing is you just want to make sure that you get it mixed up really good, especially the egg. You don't want to have globs of eggs in your batter. So then, you pour the wet into the dry. I'm going to say